Hey viewers, today we are going to go over how to change a battery in a Pontiac Solstice. The car I'm going to do the demo with is this 2009 Pontiac Solstice GXP Coupe, but this technique will cover um, any Solstice. So if you've got a convertible, it'll work. If you've got the normally aspirated 2.4 liter engine, it'll work. This technique will cover any Pontiac Solstice. So uh, let's get started. This is actually the first time I've done anything to this car. This car has super low miles and it was purchased for an incredibly good deal. Um, I think it only had 800 miles or something on it. Uh, you know, so it's a 2009 with super low miles. But anyway, I didn't know anything about this car. And today's the first day I've tried to work on it. And uh, the first puzzle I had to figure out was how to open the hood. You'd think that would be super obvious. But GM made it a tiny bit challenging. In case you haven't opened your hood before, I'm going to show you how to do that. So inside the car, you'll see this little thing that uh, is an icon that clearly refers to opening up a hood. Um, but when I first looked under here, I didn't see anything to grab. But the thing you grab, you reach up here, slide your hand back, and then there's a handle that's kind of like a handle you'd have on a uh, glove box or something. And you pull that down and it pops the hood. It's just hard to see. One nice thing about the Pontiac Solstice is the hood is a clamshell kind of design and it opens up nice and wide and gives you really good engine access. So when you first open this hood, you might be thinking, oh wow, it's gonna be so easy to get to this battery. Well, not so fast. because here is the battery. The battery is tucked down in the bodywork and uh, this fuse box thing is in the way and bodywork back there is in the way and uh, you know this hole is just not big enough to slip this battery out. So last night when I discovered I needed to change the battery, I was like, oh, wow, battery change, that'll be easy. And then I looked at this and no. So uh, I consulted the literature and learned how to take this battery out. So what you have to do to take the battery out is you actually have to remove this fender. And uh, that sounds terrible, but it's not really as big a deal as it sounds. To do it, there's three bolts on top that you take off. And then underneath, there's a couple bolts. There's this one. And then there's this one. So there's two bolts underneath. And then There's this one here. And in addition to that screw, you have to take off these, uh, you know, plastic trim things that uh, keep this wheel well in. So these things have to be extracted. And there's three of those. There is one other very difficult bolt here inside the door panel. So uh, that one's gonna be tricky to get. The first thing you wanna do to start this job is remove the negative from the battery. Uh, this is to avoid arcing and you know shooting sparks everywhere. So let's start with that. That nut is a 10 millimeter. So I've got my socket and uh, I put an extension on and we'll just go ahead and take that off. You don't have to loose, you don't have to take these completely off. You just need to get the uh, thing loose enough that you can pull it off. With a nut loose, you just rock this back and forth and it'll, it'll pop off. You might have to work a little harder than that, but it'll come off 
second, take the positive lead off. You use the same technique. Um, I'm wondering if mine is just missing this plastic cover on that side. This one has a plastic cover. Just press the tabs in, lift it up, um, and it's the same procedure. Unscrew that and uh, take, take the lead off. Let's go ahead and take out these screws. Uh, my car, these are seven millimeters. Next, we're gonna get the ones underneath. Uh, the ones underneath are 10 millimeter. And this is the second one. Next, we're gonna get this screw under here. It's a seven millimeter. The next thing we're going to take off are these push-in trim attachments. I have a, uh, a tool that's uh, specifically designed to get those out. It's nice if you can get them out without destroying them, and that is what this is supposed to do. So let's pry it up a little, and then I'm prying it up on each side, and then I'm going to attempt. Okay, we're getting there. There we go. And it's out. And I'll be able to reuse that. I don't know what this tool is called. Uh, probably just like a trim tool, but it's pretty useful for this purpose. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the rest of these out. I'm ready for that last difficult bolt that's inside the door. When you're doing work on anything, it's all about having the right tools. This is a very awkward place to get to so in order to get to it, I'm going to use this wrench. It's like a ratchet wrench and it's got this flexible head on it. And this flexible head is going to allow me to get around the corner. And now that I've like stuck it in there, I realized something. I probably want to protect the fender uh, so that I don't scratch it up. So I'm gonna get some masking tape and protect the fender. I've uh, put the masking tape on the fender and uh, and now we're going to work on that last bolt. Yep, this is really hard to video, but uh, tape turned out to be a good idea and this ratchet wrench is working perfectly. I think I have all the bolts out now. Let's see if the fender comes off. Oh, it does. Flops right off. And now you can see in there. Oh look, there's a socket I dropped earlier. <laughs> okay, but we're not done yet because this bracket is in the way. So this bracket has to come out too. To get this brace out, uh, you need to remove this bolt, this bolt, 
And then there's a there's a nut under here. So uh, let me get this nut first. This nut is a 10 millimeter, and I'm going to use the extension uh, to get up under there. Next, we're going to take out these screws. They are also 10 millimeters. One nice thing about working on a car that's not super old is the nuts and bolts and screws aren't all rusted down. So, it's, so far it's been easy to get these out. This is the last screw on the brace. Oh, and everything's loose. Uh, the bracket is now loose and uh, comes off real nicely. And we have full access to the battery. The last step to get the battery out is we have to remove this hold down. Um, the bolt on this hold down in my car is a uh, 13 millimeter. I've already loosened it a little so I can get it out uh, by fingers. So this is just a little hold down. It comes out. And now the battery is loose and we can take it out. I don't know how old this battery is. I'm wondering if it's the original battery since there were so few miles on this car. It is an AC Delco. Uh, if you knew how to read any of those codes, let me know if this is the original battery in the comments below. This is my new battery. It's a Duralast. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up in here because it's uh, easier to get to everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the leads and put the uh, hole down in and then put the car back together. I put the battery back in and test started the car and everything's working great. To put the car back together again, it's just a simple reversal of the take apart process. So I am going to start by uh, putting this bracing bracket back on. I'm going to begin just by uh, finger tightening everything. It's a good idea to have some sort of process for keeping track of your nuts and bolts and washers. Now I'm going to ratchet things tight. Now we're ready to put the fender back on. If you ever forget exactly how something goes back together, you can always refer to the other side of the car. So one thing you need to remember about this fender part is this bottom, there's a piece of plastic under here and uh, the fender goes on top of the plastic piece. So the plastic piece is above and the metal of the fender is on the outside you know, facing the ground. To stabilize things, I'm actually going to put these top screws in first. I'm going to leave them slacky, but this way I don't have to worry about the fender falling off. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in loose. So just finger tight for now. When you're putting these back together, don't forget that underneath here, there's clips that attach to that support frame and these screw into those clips. So make sure those clips are lined up and that you're hitting that clip when you're putting these in. Getting this one inside the door is going to be tricky. So I'm going to see if I can get it started with my fingers. I did get it started with my fingers. Getting at this at this screw is just a matter of uh, getting the door open at the right angle and uh, fussing with things around and having the right tool. So uh, I've got it in now and I am able to ratchet it with this tool.
now that I am doing this, um, you definitely want to make sure you protect the fenders with masking tape because there isn't really any way to do this without the ratchet wrench, you know, touching the fender. So be sure to use the masking tape. I have that bolt in. I don't have it tight because I want to be able to adjust this fender and get everything in nice and straight. So I didn't put that one in tight. Uh, the next screws we need to get are the ones underneath. Definitely keep track of these screws. On my car, the short one goes here and the long one goes here. I have the bottom screws in. Now I'm going to do these push-ins. Yeah, those are going in pretty easy and I'm able to reuse them. Don't forget this last screw at the bottom. Lastly, I am tightening up these final screws. And the last screw I'm tightening up is this one inside the door panel. I have the panel back in now. I have the battery connected. I'm going to close the hood. Okay, so this is still this is still sticking out here, so I'm going to loosen some things and make some adjustments. And you're probably going to have to do this too. So once you've got things put back together, in order to get things to align, uh, you might have to adjust some of your screws. So I'm going to do this piece of the lower fender was not flush with the hood, so I'm going to loosen these two screws and. Uh, push this in some and see if I can fix that. Loosening this didn't do anything, so I went ahead and had to loosen the nut under here. So I loosened that and pushed it in and then tightened it up. Let's see how it looks now. Gotta close the hood. Okay, it's a lot better. I might tweak it a little more, but it is definitely a lot better. That's it for today's project. Thanks for watching my video on how to change a battery in a Pontiac Solstice. While we're out here though, take a good look at this car. This car is a uh, super rare target top Pontiac Solstice GXP. So the GXP means it's got a 2 liter engine and a turbo. It's 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. And they only made about uh, 1,200 of these cars, so they are super rare. That's it for this video. Good luck with your own projects. Uh, please check out my other videos. I have a lot of videos about uh, doing things on cars and then I also have a series of videos where I go around Columbus and defeat claw machines. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe.